I'd like to find the road we roam together, swinging along, finding the long way home. We didn't mind the time or place for weather, singing a song, finding the long way home. Remember, I used to sigh at the end of each day, dear. is happening house lovers and explorers all right today's video I'm gonna take you through a beautiful stone built Tudor style home built in 1939 and it was situated at 144 Grange Road Flinders Park and as we zoom back from looking north up East Avenue here locals will know where we are where Holdbrooks Road and East Avenue meets meets Grange Road Pretty iconic house sitting on this intersection. I've always wanted to know what it looked like inside and in 2023 for the first time it went on the market and was sold. There's lots of art deco features inside and you'll see more as the video goes. Kept in the same family, the Betcher family for 84 years guys. And I will add a brief history as the video goes just to give you a little bit of a backstory to this place along with some real estate photos. And the Betcher family, previous owners, are professional orchid growers and won many awards. And this property itself was used as a huge greenhouse to grow their beautiful orchids. As you will see from the photos and the explore, the walk around. And you can tell it was very much cherished and loved by that family for the duration that they owned it. These beautiful homes change hands for whatever reasons and they fall into the hands of developers and get knocked over. And unfortunately, that's the case for this one, but at least it's on film. So let's get into the explore, guys. I think you'll like this one. There's lots to see. Let's get into it. I hope you all enjoy. What is happening, house lovers and explorers? Alright, I've been wanting to film this home for a few years now and uh, it's going to be knocked over. It was sold recently and uh, yeah, this whole site is going to be redeveloped. But it is a beautiful late 30s early 40s stone Tudor style home with the steep gables I do know the back door is open so I thought I'll just start filming out the front look at the beautiful Terrazzo veranda It's a huge home guys, there's some real estate photos that I'll probably add as well. Art Deco theme there. Yep, 
Yeah, what a beautiful home. With the ugly 5G tower behind it. Yeah, very, very long time owners for this one. Very old English feel to it as well. Sorry about the traffic noise, but yeah, these little, um, well, it is a bay window along with these Art Deco lead light patterns. Very, very indicative of the late 30s, early 40s. You could pretty much bet the farm on dating a home when you see those to the late 30s. All right. Go around the back. Also, that brickwork. Corbels, I think they're corbels. The glazed brick along the uh, gable as well. Very 30s. Yeah, it's a huge old home, guys. There's a huge uh, greenhouse there too. Now apparently this was a pretty pr predominant um, orchid and um, yeah, growing all types of fruits and plants. So we'll check them at the end. Again, Terrazzo would have cost a pretty penny. All right, well, ooh, it's like a back kitchen or the kitchen. Okay, well, it looks like maybe the uh, salvage guys have come in and assessed a few things and because those cabinets are actually off the wall. And someone has started to remove some of those green tiles. Yeah, 70s countertops, benches, double stove cove. That's an old chef, family edition. Not sure if this is the main kitchen or not. It seems quite small. Another little sunroom. Art 
they go. Another 30s feature are these wide double sash windows. And when I say wide, they're almost squared like. Check it out. It's actually that's a pastel yellow. Tiles. It's the same as what was in the kitchen. Now that is original too because That's what the old bathrooms... Oh, check out the light as well. Another Art Deco one. Well, we'll... Oh no, here's the actual kitchen. Wow! and the bake light so that little it's like a little extra summer kitchen in there probably long time Italian owners It's going to be Art Deco everywhere guys, look at the fluoro, although it's kind of out of position. It's meant to be in line with the top part there. It's missing one of the globes as well. So there's another stove cove there. And it's a little briquette fireplace. Obviously they've been in here and um, kind of assessed a few things. I'm glad it's pretty much all intact though. Oh, we've got an old uh, magazine or a newspaper. Oh damn, that's old. 1956. Yeah, down there, guys. It's a magazine. I'm definitely saving that, guys. There's, oh, there's a, there's a newspaper. The advertiser. And that is, uh, that's 1972. Oh, oh what else have we got? I love these old, whoops, just got to peel that off carefully. Move those things first. Old tiles. Sorry guys, I'm a bit sidetracked, but South Australian Motor, 1969. So I've taken a few still shots of each of these uh, magazines. And this first one is actually Pix Magazine. And I've looked it up 
and it was a pretty popular read back in the day. It covers all sorts of things from local stories, world stories, celebrity gossip, all that sort of stuff, advertisements, and the South Australian Motor Guide or magazine. Here's a few shots from that one as well. Old cars from that era. Probably recognise a few classics. The Space Age Citrion. The Fiat. Saved, saved, saved. Let's just leave them there for now. been a fluoro light put over the plaster work there right over the nice pattern oh, check out this chair hang on guys I just just had to lean the camera against the wall yeah look at that that is a, a an old leather club sofa armchair Would have been here from day one. It's done some mileage too. It's almost a bum in print there. That's so cool. That's all. That's all nice woodwork there. Someone, someone who refurbishes these things would probably love that. I'd love it just as it is like that. Cornicing. All right, we'll keep moving. Well, oh, I just about missed that. The old hardwired wall clock. I hope they, well, they definitely will save that. They're pretty sought after. Well, seeing we started in this hall, we'll, uh, we'll keep going up that way and do a loop because it looks like we'll come back through that way. Bedroom. Yep. It's a built in robe. Sixties curtains. Cascade. Oh, check it out. The doorbell. Or one of well, probably is the doorbell, so you can hear it from the back here. Usually these um, old mounts used to hold our old telephone as well. started to whisper but <laughs> yeah 
Yeah, the details of these cupboards, guys. And I've said this plenty of times before, the dark wood. Again, very, very late 30s and 40s. Looks like we've got the bathroom. Oh, the shower's behind there. I was hoping for the uh, really bright colours. The colours are here on the walls and ceiling, but I kind of went with the white. I was thinking there was going to be a nice bright pink one or something. And so it's kind of two parts. Well, this does have the pink Terezzo and that has been redone. That's not original. So maybe there was a pink tiling here, guys, that matched the floor. And I reckon they changed it all when they put this 60s basin in. little ceiling that's been redone too that's kind of like your office office block stuff but the round fluoro that's original I don't know maybe I'm trying to figure out if this is actually a little add-on. We'll have to look from the outside if it actually... Because there is a shower there. Hmm. But there is a loo there. Oh, there's some more. This would be a front bedroom. Oh, with an ensuite by the look of it. Oh, so this is like a side, yeah, this entrance is right at the uh, end of the home there, the front of the veranda. Well, that actually might be open too. Yeah, but usually these big old iron gates are locked. Gates, I should say doors. It's as sturdy as a gate though, yeah. But that beautiful lead light, it's not stained glass, obviously, but still Art Deco lead light. No bedding. So we'll go up this the main hall with the features. I'll turn the light back on. Another bedroom here.
no built in, but it's got the beautiful plaster work. Yet another light. And this would work. Still very much in your Federation era style. Yeah, this kind of foyer entrance. Beautiful. Someone's removed, um, that would have been like a little shelf. There we go, exactly the same as that. Big old solid built home does a pretty good job of keeping that tra traffic noise dulled. Okay, well, we've got the living rooms. Oh, yes. <laughs> Cannot get enough of these Art Deco features along with the fluoro light. Here the blinds and curtains are drawn so I'm not getting too much natural light in here guys but I will put the real estate photos in at the end. bay window with the reading seat there. windows either side of the fireplace are so cool. So this would be the formal living room and this would be the formal dining room off the kitchen. Very uh, large statement light fittings, aren't they? Every one has got something to say. Now the beautiful doors have been removed, I think. Yeah, they would have had the light, LED light patterns in them, no doubt, as well. And you can see where there was a big mirror Art Deco one. So back to the kitchen. We 
which means we have seen the entire inside. Yeah, what a shame they're going to knock this over. There's no wall cracks. I didn't see any. Did not see one unless you guys did, but all it needs is some TLC fresh cone of paint. And apart from the missing tiles and other a few other things, this home could have lasted well another 90 years easy. Alright guys and gals, I think it's a good time to now show some nice real estate photos of this place and also give you a little bit of a backstory as well. But first I'm going to show you this aerial survey photo from 1935 and as you can see where it's marked out there, this is where the home was built only four years later in 1939. And it was built by Mr. Adolf Gustav Becher and his wife Dora Lilly where they moved across from Finden Avenue in Seton Park, where he was listed as a gardener. So by 1941, they were listed here at 144 Grange Road. Then in 1951, Adolf unfortunately passed away, leaving Dora Lilly to live on here, where she eventually remarried and she married Thomas Slater. And they continued to live here and Thomas passed away around 1980 and then Dora Lilly lived on until 95 where she passed away in 1992. And the home was passed down and remained in the Betcher family after that right up until where it was recently sold in 2023 as we mentioned. As you can see from these real estate photos and from what we've seen so far, not much was altered and also from these uh, aerial drone shots, you can see the greenhouses set up and in full production right around the home there. And the main shed of the greenhouse is still standing with some things inside, including some old photo albums and awards from the orchids. And at the end of the video, the last part, we will show the place in, during a salvage process Always a sad sight, but that's what happens when these developers get hold of these old homes. All right, so let's continue on with the explore. Well, I thought I'd start back out to the side in front of the home and give you a look at the feature wall. This. This basket range style feature wall goes right across the front of the home. Um, it's fenced off there but there's a little gate. And the sun is just about getting ready to set. But look at the, all the room in this lot. All this area here. Along with those greenhouses which we're going to go and have a look at now. So we'll go well, what I did find is the old original outhouse, which is kind of an outhouse. After the First World War, they actually started adding them to the side and back of the house as an attached loo. And they're pretty new tanks. So 
so even even the little original uh, garage carport's got the Art Deco stepping. We'll quickly have a look in here. I think this might have been the older laundry, guys. This little section, this bit here. Maybe, I can't see any plumbing, but... A whole heap of storage. Lots of little components there. Yeah, this is the carport. Oh. Well, I was half right. There's the laundry tub. Laundry slash carport. Might have been a separating piece of uh, chipboard there at some point. Triple banger, that old trough. this oh yeah the world orchid Bible I don't know it says uh, conference oh hey, there, there you go guys the world orchid conference 1966 So, there's heaps of old pot plants down the side there, but we'll go into the hot house. Wow. I mean, obviously. Anything that was expensive regarding the equipment is long gone, I would think. Oh, there's still the framework of where they had the uh, irrigation system. Oh, check it out. There's actually um, prize ribbons there. Orchids, number one for quality. Symbidiums. Established 1977. But right here, guys, there's like... Even 2016. Royal Adelaide Champions. There's the big exhaust fan on the wall. Yeah, just a lot of old pots and junk. Nothing more annoying than sirens blaring when you're trying to film. Oh, there's an old photo album. I can't really pronounce them, these names.
Ice Cascade 1992 Tommy Amy 1993 Before the days of digital cameras and social media guys they were documenting their beautiful flowers Well, that's the International Orchid Festival of 1993. And if I have found extra history in between the upload, you will have either heard it or I'll put it in put it put it in at the end with the uh, real estate photos. So I think this whole area was used as well. Yeah, there's a lot of that irrigation piping all around here still. Just a few more supplies stacked up in here by the look. wet weather, apparel hanging up. Well, salvage process has started and they have been saving the flooring. Yeah, there's three or four rooms they've pulled up the, it might be more, might be four or five actually, pulled up the flooring and removed it via the window there the fly wire is pushed out and no doubt surely they'll save the fixtures I did notice that uh, that one's already gone it was a little lemon coloured yellow so yeah, I'll just do a little quick walkthrough to see what's happened. That's another room they've pulled up the boards, chipped away the tiles. I don't think they're keeping them though, because they're just down there. Kitchen's pretty much the same. But these two large rooms, the formal dining and the formal living, 
flooring all up as well. And I'll just step down in here. Fixture's still there. Well, at least there's um, a bit of natural light coming in, although <laughs> without the flooring, but didn't check in there the first time I came through but yeah only a green cushion looks as though there may have been a bit of white air damage to the windows as well they've probably assessed them hopefully they grabbed the lead light I'm not sure but Depends if the wood's rotted or not. Well, a lot of the door trims don't look like they've been saved. Perhaps just the flooring. Check out the layers of lino here, guys. You got the original flooring there, the dark wood. And there's a first layer there. There's no newspaper under that first layer, though, I did notice. And then you've got the second layer. And then a th first layer of carpet which is a third layer of covering green and then finally a fourth layer didn't even bother removing any of the ones previous <laughs> alright guys and gals that is it we have seen the lot I hope you enjoyed, even though this ending part is always a bit of a, a sad part, seeing the home destroyed and in the process of salvage. But we've seen it before, and unfortunately, that is the reality of many of these beautiful old homes around Adelaide. Alright, I really hope you enjoyed, and I'll say thanks for watching. Jump in the comments and let me know your thoughts. And I'll move on to another one. And I'll see you in the next video, wherever that is. Alright guys, cheers. Bye.